So I guess to start out with, how long have you been with the fire department? Uh, I've been here for 42 years. 42 years, yes, sir. I, and, uh, yeah, I started here uh, as a volunteer. And in 2000, uh, the, uh, at that time, it was a part-time fire chief mm -hmm. that was running operations. Well, Peter Mitchell, I think you remember. Yes, yeah, yeah. I remember Peter. And when he retired there, he was doing a part time and they asked if I would consider taking it on, which I said, yeah, sure, I'll give it a, give it a shot. Yeah. And found there uh, after a few years there that that was a bit of a struggle to keep the family business and, yeah. and the fire chief thing going and doing a good job of either one. So, yeah, that was uh, 2007. They turned it into a full time job. Yes, sir. Because before you had a landscaping business, is that correct? Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's actually still going on there. The brothers still have it, but oh, uh, really? stepped, yes, I stepped away from it and that's yeah, worked out good for everybody. Mm -hmm. So initially those 40 years ago, what drew you to the department to begin with? Um, well, I, I guess my love of fire drugs. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've uh, yeah I've always uh, I, I've always been uh, admired the, the 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 fire equipment there around our town and uh, actually my brother-in-law was on the department at the time okay and, uh, he kind of encouraged me to get involved in it there and uh, you know I, I really hadn't thought about it till he you know put the thought in my head and I thought well at uh, at the time there this might be a, a good move and so uh, yeah so I took him up on it yeah um throughout the years what's been your favorite memory with the fire department well, i i think as far as through the years just the relationships that you build you know like over 40 years odd years there um i've made some really really good friends yes. um, made a few enemies but <laughs> <laughs> uh and i mean I just the, it's it's an interesting group of people you bring together it's and, you know, a large majority of them are uh, A-type personalities there, and uh, you can get a, uh, but it, it was still there. They, they come from, you know, all aspects of of, uh, of the community here as far as what they do, and and uh, it, I've always found it really interesting there to be able to, you know, stay in contact with people like that. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, with the people coming from different backgrounds, it really goes to a department with a volunteer base to really diverse set of talents they can draw from sometimes as well just oh it's it's really important there like when you uh you know you talk about taking you know a building construction as far as a firefighter well it's great when you've got uh, you know half a dozen people that are involved in the building construction business yeah. that are on your department there eh? so you get to a building there and you know they're a wealth of information there as far as being able to share what they know about not that particular building but buildings of that style in general and what you could be you know what you got to be cautious of and so it's it's uh it's it's good there you know to, to, to have that that uh, you know that input from people like that exactly well you're the chief of bracebridge of course um i guess tell me a little bit about the town itself uh, well, Bracebridge, uh, well, it's grown up over the years there. We, um, we had a bit of a manufacturing base until, well, I guess around to the mid seventies, I guess, um, uh, we had a decent manufacturing base here that, uh, like a, a five or six big businesses that were great employers and great for the community there. And, uh, just like a lot of smaller communities, those, those big jobs, those good jobs started to pull out in, in you know, the late 70s and 80s. And uh, so we kind of went back to our, uh, like we're a, a big vacation area for people from the GTA. And, uh, and so we've, in recent years, we've uh, become a retirement community. Uh, a lot of people from the GTA that uh, maybe they vacationed up here from time to time uh, or had vacations homes up here. And uh, as they got into the retirement age, uh, this is where they decided they wanted to live. So our population has grown uh, uh, fairly respectable over the last few years. And a lot of that has been from people that are moving here and, and calling Bracebridge home now. Exactly. You mentioned the, uh, the summer cottages. Um, I know I made the mistake of coming up your way on a Friday afternoon one time and uh, the traffic... <laughs> 
I, I wasn't used to that experience, I guess. So. No, and that's uh, and that's what you would see. Uh, you know, uh, pre-COVID, there would be uh, Friday nights coming north and Sunday nights going south. Um, you need to, to plan your trip there because it could be a you know a, a two-hour trip to Toronto could turn into a five or six-hour trip. <laughs> exactly. Um, Roughly, how much does your population increase in the summer, Marie? Is it like 50% or? Uh, we go from around, well, uh, like our, at the last census, we had 16,000. And yeah. we, uh, you know, their, their calculations from um, the bean counters above me there say we go up to around 25,000. Wow. Yes, sir. Through the summer months there. So, uh, yeah. And right now, there's, there's a lot of those people there that have decided to. Uh, um, you know, like between uh, their summer home and their uh, their GTA home, mm -hmm. uh, their summer home has become their permanent there now. So exactly. you know, right now that we've got a lot more, a lot more people that are, are staying in the British Ridge area there over the winter months that we don't normally see. Yep. Um, are there any unique qualities about Bracebridge that presents challenges for your department? Well, like we cover 350 square miles. So we've got a, a, a lot of um, a lot of areas there that, that we got some some long distance travel times there. I guess to go to some of the further extents there areas we would be looking at uh, probably 25 kilometers away from our hall. So uh, so yeah, it's uh, you know that that combination of this this uh, wide ranging rural area in our, in our old downtown core, yeah. um, you know, always a concern there. These, uh, you know, the old hundred year old towns there with the, the you know, the, the buildings all built nice and tight together there. Yeah, exactly. uh, always in the back of your mind there. We've had, a, you know, over the, the four years that I've been here, we've had, you know, two or three large downtown fires there that we try and contain it to at least the building where it started there. And, and save your downtown and we've been fortunate up to this point there it's been good yeah now does your area have any flooding problems as well in the in the springtime or or we've, we've had uh, over the years there you you, you kind of get used to uh, you know some high water in in the springs uh, in 2019 we had more than high water we did have actually some pretty serious floods um, and it was it was kind of strange there because you could uh, you know because of the topography in in our area you could uh, drive around a large portion of the town and not realize there there was any problems at all yeah. but the areas that did have problems they had them big yes and so it was it was uh, you know it was up until 2019 we'd really never we'd had some flooding before that but nothing to that extent there and, it's certainly sticking in everybody's mind there. Climate oh, change is there. Exactly. And, uh, exactly. Look, uh, it's, uh, you know, and, and uh, you know, that, that tourist um, business that we've had there has built up things around the lakes that normally there was a lot of areas that could absorb some of that water. But, uh, you know, with the build that we've had around, around the water courses there, it's just added to that issue. Yeah. Um, I guess to move on to your department itself, um, what is the size of your department as as far as uh, number of members, uh, full time and volunteer? I guess we uh, we run three full time out of in an in assistant uh, out of our main station here in town, mm -hmm. and uh, we've uh, got myself a deputy chief slash training officer and my fire prevention officer there. So. Uh, uh, and then we we try and work between the 45 and 50 volunteers. Um, the uh, the uh, you know over the years there that, that number fluctuates uh, just like at any other department our size there. Um, but that's the number we shoot for. And you respond from two different stations, is that correct? Yeah, we have a, a second station there. Um, it's it's about 35 kilometers away. Um, it's, uh, we, we run, uh, we keep a complement of around a dozen at that station. Yeah. Try there again to struggle to get that up to 15, but it seems to be, uh, keep that 12 number in, in the back of our minds there. So, um, so yeah, we keep a, a, a tanker and a pumper out at that station there to cover that area. Okay. Now, what would be the greatest challenge you're currently facing in your department? 
I think the challenge we're facing is the same as any other volunteer department is recruitment and retention. Exactly. Um, yeah. We uh, we definitely um, don't have a problem attracting people to have a look at the volunteer positions. Um, it's but now with the amount of training, uh, as far as the recruit program that we have now, and uh, the amount of work that they have to go through to get you know on as a you know truck ready firefighter. Um, there's a lot of people there. They they look at that and decide there that's just a little more than they're they're ready to to sign up for there with a the family and and a job and uh, usually the spouses is working too and so the the time commitment is just a challenge for everybody now. Yeah, and I find like even with people's children, the children seem to be in more and more uh, things as well. So that's you know trying to divide your time amongst everything is. It, it is. It's, uh, you know, like you, you can say whatever you want there, but, uh, you know, over my years here, um, you know, we've gone from when I joined there, it was, uh, you know, uh, two nights a month there training and, uh, you know, and you, you know, the call volume wasn't to that extent. And now you go around here that we're expecting there at least once a week here, we've got them in doing something there again through COVID things have changed slightly there, but um, you know, it, it's, it is a, is a time commitment that a lot of people aren't, they're, they're either not willing to, to, to go down that road to start with, or they discover, you know, within a fairly short timeline there that it's, they just can't make it work. And uh, so that's, you know, it, 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 like I say, the recruitment's not bad for us, um, but it's, it's the retention. It's trying to keep them here because uh, they're now, you, you seem to be, if, if you've got them over the five years, you, you, I think you, you figure, well, we got a good one. We got a keeper now. But up to that five years there, uh, you know, at any time, um, and it's it's strange. You can see it. You know, they, they start, you notice, know, oh, geez, uh, they weren't at that last training. And then, you know, they missed a couple of calls. And then, as you know, so you, and we try desperately. We sit down, we'll do anything we can to try and adapt here. To, find ways that we can keep people interested there and and uh you know like the training there we'll we'll move things around to try and accommodate but at a certain point there people find there that it's just it is just too much and, and uh, they say goodbye yeah now does your department have to do any of their own fundraising murray or no we uh we're fortunate any uh the fundraising we do is mostly to contribute to other fundraisers there like exactly. we're uh, we over the years we uh you know i recall a lot you know while uh, one truck we got from you that the the old uh, rescue that we had um when we bought that one that truck was was built with money that we fundraised yes sir. So, uh, it's gone from that to uh and and that was um kind of uh, the, the the breaking point for us there that you know we went back to council and peter and, and at the time and said like look this is uh, this is great, and we're we're really happy to contribute this to the to the municipality. But it, it comes a time when you know we've got to sit back and and uh, you know do do some uh, serious uh, figuring about how we're going to fund this department. And uh, and so you know budget wise, we've been fortunate there to have a, a fairly accommodating councils and mayors over the years, and uh, and they've seen that that you know if you want to keep. Uh, um, you know, like a, an active fire department there that needs equipment and, you know, it needs, you know, it needs to be funded properly. And so we've, we've headed down that road and that's worked out well. Yeah, no, no that's good. Um, I guess now into the, into the fun stuff. Uh, how many, uh, speaking along the lines of the fire trucks, how many are in your fleet of trucks, Murray? Right now we have what I would call seven heavy trucks. Uh, pumpers rescues and the like and uh three light duty four by four type utility trucks okay so uh, yeah and it's you know it's uh well we've uh, i think there that uh i think metal fab trucks i think we got seven of those in our fleet there now yes the years that we've we've uh, purchased from you guys yeah sir um What's the main challenge you face in regards to your trucks at this point? I guess it's uh, it's always been uh, trying to take your needs to uh, figure them against 
what what you can what you can put into a truck. We've we've had uh, issues over the years where we tried to put uh, our our all of our wishes into one truck and found out the hard way there that you can't do that. There is a there is a a line you have to draw on the sand there that you can't have a truck that does uh, everything for everybody. There's uh, you know, there's certain certain functions those trucks have to perform and you have to isolate that out and so it's always been a challenge there trying to you know design that perfect truck there that fits and uh, we we think we have a good combination there now with uh, you know we're for our rural stuff there we have two tankers in town here and we got one at the second station there uh, and we're fortunate too that we have a, a good mutual aid group here that if we need additional tankers they're you know they're in fairly short order and um, you know and, and our pumpers there well it's uh, it's uh, you know that that's the for us is a, the, the first out truck to put near everything we've got here and uh, and we found for our operations there having a specified rescue truck works good it's that toolbox there that all those things that you can't fit on the other trucks you can put in it exactly. and, uh, so it's you know like we're quite happy with what we've got you know as far as our complement of vehicles I think they do as well um, do, do, do. from, from back when you first started, um, what would be the biggest thing change in fire trucks from back then to now, other than the size, of course. <laughs> yeah, the size has definitely grown. And, uh, you know, we've gone from that, uh, well, the first truck we purchased from you guys was a mini pumper. Yes. Um, back in 89 or something like yeah. that, it was our first truck. And, uh, you know, like it, it's, you know, back then the, the mini pumper, it, it, we thought, thought that was a, a good thing for our second station to get down small roads. And, but then after you have them for a while, you find out why well, you got down that small road, but you only took 250 gallons of water with you. Yeah. And so, you know, then you revert back. And uh, so that's gone full circle that we put a full size truck at that station. And now we're thinking, well, that's just a little too big. And so it, it's, you know, that, that size thing, it's, you're always going to be playing that game, trying to figure out, okay, what is the best fit? Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I think there, for me personally, just looking at the way that technology has changed and, uh, you know, to, to think back of some of the stuff that we, you know, had on our, on the pumpers when I first joined up here and see what we're, we've got now, uh, these things are pretty luxurious there compared to what we were running. Well, yeah. you know, about 40 years ago, we thought we had the great truck too, but exactly. to, to look at them now and, uh, you know, the, the cabs that, uh, that we've got, um, you know, that keeps everybody nice and warm and, and, and cool in the summer and, uh, and safe, uh, you know, the safety aspect that's built into all of this stuff uh, would have never been thought of when I started out. Yeah. Um, you mentioned your first truck from us, the mini pumper, uh, that mini pumper was actually the first truck we sold in Ontario. It was. Yeah. yeah. I remember that because uh, it seems to me, Peter was at, uh, the OAFC or something there and bumped into you guys. Yeah. And he had gone from, from supplier to supplier looking for somebody that would build a truck that just that he wanted. Exactly. And, uh, that's was where you guys clicked there is, uh, he explained what, what uh, what we were looking for, and uh, I remember him saying how accommodating you guys were to come up with. Okay, well, we can build you something here that's just exactly what you want, and uh, and uh, you know, it, and, and the truck is you know, it, well, we ended up it went to uh, way up north there, like when we were done with there uh, to Pine Lake, and so it's uh, as far as I know, it, it may still be operating there. Yeah, and uh, I see your your custom pumper made its way over to Newfoundland there now. So <laughs> that was the neatest story. I can't believe that happened there. Right. Yeah. I don't know if you know, uh, the guy we sold it to there, Tom there, but Tom uh, coffee. I've met him a couple times there. Yeah. Have you? Yeah. But, uh, he is, uh, he is just the nicest guy you'd ever want to be. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was uh, definitely a real trust issue there because he needed the truck there to show to them and, and uh, couldn't get any money till it got there, and so it was. Uh, it was one of those things there that uh, it wasn't even a handshake. It was mostly uh, okay. Let's do this over the phone, and uh, yeah. 
but he uh, he was quite happy with what he got, and oh, uh, yes. we decided to go to a good home there. Yeah. Um, I guess, uh, if you don't mind, uh, if you could tell us about your experience with Metal Fab. Um, it's all been good. <laughs> I I really, uh, you know, not uh, not because you're on, on the other end of this conversation yeah. here, but it's uh, we really, uh, uh, you know, I, I've uh, like I say, it, it started it with my predecessor there. And we, you know, like uh, I was fortunate that he let me get involved in the, the truck part of it there really early. And uh, so, uh, you know, all of the trucks that we've built over the years there, I've had a part of. And uh, I know dealing with, with it's uh, the the one-on-one -on -one treatment that we get there from you guys. It's always nice. It's, I feel bad sometimes when I, when I phone and ask you, <laughs> where some background information with the thought there that there's a good chance you might not get this. Oh, <laughs> this, I this book, okay? um, but it, it's, you've always been our go-to and uh, it's, it's, uh, it's always been a great relationship there that, uh, you know, I always look forward to the next truck and, you know, yeah. you know what we can to, to see if we can get it from metal path. <laughs> exactly. Um, let's see here. I guess that more or less wraps everything up. The only other thing I had was what do you like about working with us? Um, but I think you sort of answered that in your last response there. So Yeah, I, yeah, I think there that it's, it, it is the, the ability to be able to pick up a phone and talk, talk directly, you know, with you guys there. Uh, even when you were working with a salesman here, uh, we still had that ability there to you know, kind of overstep them. And, and it's, it's been that, that ability there, even with, uh, you know uh, some of the issues we've had with our our, our trucks as far as uh, you know any uh, um, technical problems we had there um, uh, I was laughing there a little while ago and uh, we got a, a new uh, um, load control module there and uh, like we got it and it didn't get programmed when we got here and and I was talking to your tech there and he was uh, he says, uh, I says, uh, you know, this is, I'm not, I'm not your, I'm not your mechanic here. And I said, but I need somebody to talk me through this. And uh, yeah. I couldn't believe it, how I went to school there for about <laughs> 20 minutes there and was really proud of myself when we were all done that it worked the way it was supposed to there. Yeah. And, uh, but that sort of thing there being, you know, knowing that you can pick up the phone and, and get that kind of help that, you know, it wasn't like we're, you know, it was a uh, sort of a, well, uh, I'll put you through to this guy who will put you through to that guy to put you through to that guy. Exactly. Yeah. Just a minute. This is the guy that can help you. And uh, it makes a big difference. Yeah. No, that sounds good. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to add before we wrap up, I guess, Murray? I think that's pretty good. I'm, I'm yeah. sure you can get enough, enough good news out of that. Baby. I think so. I think so. All right. Anyway. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. It's uh, definitely good. greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.